Jesus never knew sin. So Jesus never sat on the cross going, I'm trying not to lust, I'm trying not to lust. I'm trying not to steal, I'm trying not to steal. He never knew sin, right? So when the devil came to tempt him, the devil didn't tempt him with sin, right? Because he knew no sin. So the core of temptation was not even actually about lustful, sinful things. It was about not receiving the identity God has given you, right? The devil came and tempted him to disregard who he was in God. Okay, look, we could spend a lot of time on that, okay? So the fundamental reality, though, is he could be tempted, though. So the devil could come and present something to Christ that in his human limitation, it seemed possible, plausible, right? So Jesus got tired. Right? We know that Jesus faced human limitations. Jesus disappointed people. Jesus was never always making everybody happy. Jesus disappointed people who hated him. He disappointed people who loved him. Because people are functioning from their emotions. And often their emotions can be driven not by faith, but by fears, right? We're people. So when our humanity takes over and our flesh takes over, no matter how much we love someone, they might not understand what God is speaking over us and to us. So Jesus disappointed people. So he never went, I cannot disappoint this person. They love me so much. It's easy to disappoint someone who doesn't like me who I don't like. Do you get what I'm trying to say? But he never functioned like that. And so it's interesting, if you were to look at Jesus's life and describe him in one word, we have the word describing Jesus, Messiah, right? The Christ. And then we can look beyond that as all the names of God, healer, provider, right? All of these functions, the power of God, God most high, our priest, our prophet, But if you were to ask, what is it like to describe Jesus to people who do not understand spiritual language, there is one word that always describes Jesus. That would be in the modern day world, in the English, the word chilled. (laughs) Relaxed, okay, relaxed. Now, I don't mean it. It's a terrible list. I'm not talking about lazy. I'm not talking about being someone who society looks at and goes, this person is going nowhere. They're so chilled, right? On the couch, eating knickknacks, watching, binge watching Netflix, right? And someone else has to clean the house. Someone else has to provide and pay the bills. That's not chilled. All of you thinking of your teenagers right now, right? No. What I mean by chilled is, He was relaxed. He never seemed stressed, hurried, panicked, irritated. Jesus was never influenced by his circumstances. He walked into a place and peace walked into a place. He walked into a place and wisdom walked into a place. He walked into a place and love walked into the place, right? When he showed up, all that was lacking became present. But it was on his time, in his way. And the interesting thing is, we cannot ignore though that Jesus had certain disciplines. Jesus had certain things he did. And what's so fascinating to me, and I'm speaking to me, okay, you know, I'm, I, may, I may not be the pastor for many of you, some of you watching, many of your friends out there, because I tend to throw myself under the proverbial bus. Um, I tend to say, this is my challenge, but I will always be open and transparent with you because that's how God made me. And, uh, and at least at least you can go, that's who I am. But I'm never the pastor that presents to you only what I've mastered, right? And uh, because I find, quite frankly, 
you might relate a lot more to me than you think. But what I find fascinating is I can be in this role, God ordained to be at this time, at this moment, speaking to all of you, our churches, both in South Africa and beyond. And I can still do things my way, not God's way. I can still ignore God's way because I'm gifted. I'm gifted. Like, I have a gift. Tara gets so annoyed. She says, like, when you step into that role and God made me and he anointed me with a gift, right? But here's the thing. There's a part of me that will never develop as long as I do things my way. You know what that is? You can be as gifted as anything, meaning you can, you can organically, naturally do something. God made you and designed you to do something. God made you and designed you to be able to function, to be able to, to a degree, perform in something, right? That's your gifting. But the interesting thing is, I can function from my gifting, but I never develop my character. Okay, now this is important because if your character never develops, right, you're all thinking this, well, then you're gonna have a failure. Well, then you're gonna have a fall. Well, then you're gonna mess up. Well, then you're gonna do something wrong. All of those things are true, okay? All of those things are true. If your character never gets worked on, meaning the stuff in you, the fears you have, the anxieties you carry, the sin that you tend to fall into, right? If God never works there, right, the immediate thought you all have is, well, then we're gonna have a pastor who's gonna have an affair or a pastor who's gonna have a burnout or a pastor who's gonna steal or a pastor who's gonna become addicted to substances and all those things are true. But do you wanna know something? That's not what really matters to God the most. If you never let God develop your character, it is a direct sign you have never let him get to know you and you have never let yourself get to know him. See, character, godly character, is built from a deep understanding of the love and the grace and the goodness and the kindness of God. So the Bible says the goodness of God leads us to repentance. And we looked last time that repentance is not saying sorry. Repentance is changing from an earthly way to a heavenly way. Repentance is metanoia, changing your thinking, therefore changing your actions, becoming a different person. When a butterfly starts out, right, as the worm, whatever it is. It's metanoia describes going from that animal in the cocoon to the butterfly, from that insect to the butterfly. It is a completely different, completely different insect. The same, but completely different. And when you metanoia into who you are in Christ, you are the same, but completely different. You're the same name, you look the same, you have the same giftings, but you're a completely different person. It's the glory of God working in your life. Now, that is literally connected to the development of character because you have already got a character and that character comes from good old Adam and Eve in the garden. You were born with a character, right? <laughs> All of you have a closet and that character exists and all of you have things you do under pressure and ways you act and it comes to the surface, right? That ungodly character, right? And what's fascinating is if you only function from gifting, you will get to a place where your gifting cannot sustain your character. But here's the thing. If your character is lacking, it is not a sign that you're a bad person. It's a sign that you haven't let God work there. You've kept God to here, okay? Why is that? Because we fundamentally believe God would reject this. But what we don't understand is he came to die to redeem this. 